They fuck you up, your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you. But they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old-style hats and coats who half the time were soppy stern and half at one another's throats. Man hands on misery to man. It deepens like a coastal shelf. Get out as early as you can and don't have any kids yourself. Of course, Philip Larkin's solution to the problem is not acceptable. It would mean the end of the human race. But uh, he puts his finger on one of the uh, biggest problems that I consider it even uh, uh, a greater threat to mankind than global warming, and that is the, the wrong way we bring up our children. Now, uh, how do we start bringing them up the right way? We can't uh, go to university. There's no faculty for parenthood. So logically, the only people we can actually learn from are the children themselves. Now, I've uh, been working with children for most of my uh, working life, uh, and I have learned a tremendous amount from them, starting with my own children. Uh, when I was uh, writing scripts for uh, a preschool ch t television series, Paula Tarots, uh, my children were then five and six, uh, and I observed them watching television. And the programs they liked best of all were, of course, the commercials and for the cartoons. Why? Because the pictures changed very quickly. And so I made a television series in which the pictures changed very quickly. It was very successful for, uh, with the preschool children, and it won an international uh, award. So uh, thanks to my children. Now, that's a specific uh, uh, example of how I learned from children. The more general one uh, came when I was working in a play school, an English play school, uh, about 20 years ago, uh, with uh, children of age five and six. Now, uh, one morning, I came into the classroom with uh, uh, some sets of pictures, which uh, I think we can see, we'll see as pictures of uh, two donkeys who were tied together, uh, and they wanted to eat from two bushes. Uh, but the rope was, uh, was, wasn't long enough for them to uh, reach the bushes, each, each to reach one bush. So they had to think of a way of, uh, of doing it. Now, I gave uh, these pictures all mixed up to the children in pairs. It's a, a little uh, problem about uh, cooperation, and I wanted them to cooperate. And uh, all five pairs of children, aged five and six, solved it with no problem at all. Now, that afternoon, I was working with school children, aged seven to eight. They'd been at school for about a year. Uh, and I gave them the same uh, problem, again in pairs. And what happened? Not a single pair could solve the problem. And then uh, when I showed them uh, how it should be, they said, oh, but that's easy. And I suddenly realized that they had been looking for something difficult. They'd started school. Uh, and they'd already learned that school is difficult, mm. that uh, if they set a problem, they have to work very hard in order to solve it, and they could not see the simplicity of it. And uh, what I learned from that, from the preschool children, was that actually life itself is far more simple than we think it is. What is difficult is living in the society that we have created for ourselves. Now, um, uh, with this uh, same group of preschool children, another morning, I, I brought into the uh, classroom uh, a, little, a, a large bag of earth, some yogurt pots, and some seeds. And uh, I said, right, we're now going to plant uh, a seed in the, in the yogurt pot, and uh, we'll see what happens. And so I poured the earth out onto the table and said, right, now everybody fill a yogurt pot. And I started filling mine, and I saw that some of the children uh, didn't want to touch the earth. And then I suddenly realized that uh, possibly uh, they'd been told by somebody that they shouldn't touch earth, they shouldn't touch the ground. It's what's sometimes called here, kaka. You mustn't touch, you might get your hands dirty, you might get your clothes dirty. And to get your clothes dirty, that's naughty. You might get punished. Well, I persuaded them to, uh, that they could wash their hands afterwards and everything was all right. But you see, what is being naughty? Being naughty to me uh, is uh, quite simply doing something which adults don't like. I mean, there's nothing wrong in, in getting your hands dirty. There's nothing really wrong in getting your clothes dirty. It can be washed. There's nothing wrong in making a noise when you're uh, playing. But if it gets on mummy's and daddy's nerves, if it's against the house rules, so to speak, it becomes naughty and you might get punished. Uh, I was a very naughty boy when I was small, and I was certainly punished. I, was, uh, I used to get a, a sharp smack on my thigh, which was always a bare thigh, because I always wore short trousers, winter and summer. 
but the thing is, it never stopped me from being naughty. Uh, it hurt briefly, but I, st I still continue being naughty. Because being naughty <laughs> is an essential part of growing up. It's an essential part of a child's life. Because oh, uh, being naughty is all part of discovering. It's all part of a child's natural curiosity. Uh, which, um, of course, should be encouraged and not, uh, not stopped by being uh, smacked on the thigh. And um, uh, because when a child uh, starts discovering, uh, he experiences that uh, beautiful sense of wonder. When a child, a small child, discovers something, he doesn't, or she, or she doesn't uh, start analysing it and trying to find out why it's like that. They just uh, have this beautiful sense of wonder. And that, I think, is what we should be encouraging, encouraging this sense of wonder. It's something which we should be able to, to uh, carry on into our adult life, as uh, was the case with the uh, poet William Wordsworth, who wrote um, a poem, uh, My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when I was a child? So is it now I'm a man? So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man. And I could wish my days to be bound to each by natural piety. So Wordsworth uh, was able to keep this sense of wonder. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons why uh, our childhood, our child-like child, uh, sense of wonder uh, is uh, not encouraged is due to uh, St. Paul, who in his otherwise uh, wonderful and very beautiful chapter, uh, 13th chapter of the uh, uh, second, uh, first epistle to the Corinthians, he wrote, When I was a child, uh, I spoke as a child, uh, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child, but whenever I became an adult, I put childish things behind me. He didn't, uh, uh, so he, fe he felt that um, being a child is one thing, and when you're an adult, you act your age. Uh, and uh, that, uh, in the 19th century, it's very, a very popular definition of a child was an incomplete adult, and education was uh, supposed to complete that adult. Fortunately, also in the 19th century, um, uh, came along a man called Rudolf Steiner, who is uh, an educational philosopher, and he had a very different uh, uh, idea. He, he considered that uh, children should be that sense of wonder should be encouraged, uh, and he, he founded uh, a number of schools. Today, there are about a thousand of these schools in 60 different countries. Uh, and uh, if you go to uh, children who go to a Rudolf Steiner school, they don't, won't learn to read until they're seven, uh, and they won't learn mathematics until they're ten. The reason being uh, that uh, they should be allowed to, uh, their sense of uh, uh, their imagination uh, and sense of wonder should be allowed to uh, develop as long as possible. Now, um, Unfortunately, uh, uh, and also the, one of the key things of the school was that the uh, children should be allowed to full, fulfill their unique destiny. We all have our own destiny. Now, can you imagine uh, a Ministry of Education coming along and saying, right, now all schools in Serbia uh, from this year are going to concentrate on fulfilling people's unique destiny? Uh, that simply won't happen. Uh, uh, unless I become a Minister of Education. But um, um, uh, so it, if the schools won't do it, then we must do it ourselves. Uh, uh, it is up to, up to us to, uh, to encourage, uh, to, encourage uh, to help children to fulfill their unique destiny. Uh, now, uh, I have been fortunate to be working with children. Uh, if you have children yourself, you, uh, you have plenty of uh, chance to learn from children, but uh, you might say, well, I haven't got any children, I don't work with children, uh, how do I learn from children? Well, we're all children once, we can learn from ourselves. We can learn, uh, and a very good exercise, very good way of doing that, is to cast your mind back to your very first memory. Have you ever done that? The very first thing you remember. Now, I am now 70, uh, but I can remember back nearly 67 years when I was in hospital having my tonsils out. Uh, and I, my mother wasn't allowed to come into the ward to visit me. Uh, and so uh, uh, I, and I have a very clear picture of her standing uh, and waving at me through the little window in the door of the ward. I also remember during that time in hospital, uh, I dreamt that I was having my tonsils out. 
later on, I remember very clearly that first night at boarding school, when I was sent to boarding school when I was seven. Uh, and uh, the, the important thing about these memories is that I'm very conscious now, at the age of 70, that I am the same Timothy who was having his tonsils out at three and a half. I'm the same Timothy who was sent to boarding school. I've had similar feelings which have told me that I'm absolutely the same person. Within me, uh, there's a little Timothy of three and a half, a Timothy of five, a Timothy of ten, a young, a young uh, man, Timothy, of, of 18. And it's all part of... Uh, it's all, it's, it's all me. It's all part of me. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that can enable us to understand uh, and to, to learn from children and from childhood. And that will put us in a position to educate children in the, uh, in the, in the proper way, to help them fulfill uh, their unique destiny, uh, uh, and also, uh, I say, to educate them in the correct way. The meaning of the education, what does education really mean? It's a Latin word, of course, and it comes from two words, uh, ex or e, meaning out, uh, and uh, ducere, to lead, or to bring, to bring out. And so education is actually uh, a leading out, rather than a stuffing in, which is what tends to happen in schools. Uh, and uh, well, I started with a quotation uh, which was setting out the problem. I shall end with a quotation which suggests uh, a solution. It's uh, by Muriel Spark from her novel, The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. Uh, Miss Jean Brodie is a teacher, and at one stage she says, uh, to me, education is a leading out of what is already there in the pupils' souls. Think about that, and thank you. <laughs>